Ask Abby, providing answers, insights, and education designed to give you the tools and knowledge you need to thrive financially and live confidently in retirement. And we are here with Abby Reed. It's Ask Abby. Abby is the co-CEO of the Reed Financial Group, the retirement family, a resource to North Georgia, Atlanta, surrounding areas, savers and investors and proactive planners. And you can find information online at goaskabby.com, where, Abby, we recently received a pretty timely question. What does the passage of the SECURE Act mean for my retirement savings? So, Abby, the SECURE Act is a pretty broad, sweeping legislative change to many of the rules regarding retirement accounts and preparedness. A lot of options, a lot of provisions. What do we need to know about SECURE Act 2.0? So the SECURE Act 2.0 is the the follow-up or kind of the the brother, sister, what have you, of the original SECURE Act that um, made sweeping changes to a lot of different things that affects uh, the, the people that we work with. So those that are planning for retirement fairly soon um, in retirement. Um, it, it made changes to the stretch IRAs. So it did away with that, um, changed the RMD age from 70 and a half to 72. So this is the follow-up to that. Um, so they were able to get together, work on a, a couple, well, not a couple, a slew of new provisions that are really aimed at savers, investors, and people that are planning for retirement, which is near and dear to my heart. Um, I'm excited about this Secure Act 2.0. They kind of got it in right um, right in the nick of time at the end of the year uh, in 2022. So we're still uncovering everything that uh, was in this bill. It was uh, in the um, it was included in in a much much larger bill. So we're going through and and really pulling out the the most important topics, uh, the things that are going to be most important to our clients, um, and then also opportunities that it presents. Um, in, in and there's newspeak, a lot of them. In Newspeak, they buried it in yes. the holiday season. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, yes. W- what's your take though? Did Congress actually get this one more right than wrong? Is is this a pretty beneficial bill? I, I see it as very positive. I There's there's typically pros and cons to things like this, like the, the original SECURE Act, RMD age was increased. So that gives people more flexibility. You can still take distributions, of course, but you don't have to. Um, but then they took away the stretch IRA, which uh, was, I mean, it, it changed plans entirely. Um, and so that was kind of a a pro and a con situation with this one. I see mostly pros and mostly opportunities for people that, um, for super savers and people that are planning for retirement. Um, that's not, you know, everybody these days, it's, it's harder to save, um, because everything is more expensive. Um, but for those that have put themselves in a position to be able to take advantage of these, these things, this is a huge opportunity. Um, and it's a great time to look through this, figure out what applies to you, um, maybe what applies to, to your kids, um, and, um, and give them some, some information as well, because, you know, it's going to be on, especially for the younger generation, it's going to be on us to, to support ourselves in retirement. There's not going to be pensions or there really aren't any more. Um, we really need to focus on those sort of things. So this is good information for not only the people that, that we typically work with close to retirement or in retirement, um, but everybody across the board, those planning for, for college, for kids. Um, there's some, some uh, provisions about 529s that we were just speaking about uh, offline. Um, one of the main things, um, and, and this was kind of the headline, at least for, for what we do for our clients is that they've adjusted the RMD age again. Um, and so I don't want there to be any con- confusion about this. So if you were, if you turned 72 last year and you had to start RMDs, you have to keep those RMDs going. However, if you're not yet 72, you're going to turn 72 by the end of 2023, you can now start RMDs at um, 73. So you don't have to take RMDs this year. You're going to take them next year. So that means there's an opportunity potentially to 
take the same distribution that you were going to have to for an RMD this year and convert that to a Roth instead of just having to take it out for an RMD. Because remember with RMDs, those are not eligible for Roth conversions. So you would have to take that distribution and then you would have to take another distribution to convert that to a Roth. So it's giving people an opportunity to um, realize the same income that they were going to realize before this passed, but put it in a tax-free position. So in other words, Abby, just because we can delay for an extra year doesn't necessarily mean that we should delay for that extra year. Right. Exactly. Yes. Just do it in a different way is what is what I would recommend. Um, you know, obviously every situation is different, like we always say. Um, so we'll, we would take a look at it. Um, we would do what, what we call a tax. What if for our clients to see, is this a good year to go ahead and do that? But most likely it's it's going to be because we were already planning on RMD starting anyways. So why not go ahead and you don't even have to take the the full amount that was going to be your RMD, but at least something, some kind of a uh, a distribution to convert that to a Roth, um, because as you know, as I think we all know and can all agree, um, taxes are are not going to to go down in the future. I would um, I don't like to make too many predictions, but I'm pretty comfortable with that one. Well, next on your list here, also related to the RMDs, whoops, we missed our RMD. Well, thankfully, the penalty for that is being pretty significantly reduced. Yes. So missed RMDs are um, a something that the IRS really wants people to avoid. They want to scare people into taking those RMDs um, because it's kind of hard for them to track that too. Um, so they want to make sure that if they do catch someone not taking RMDs, they're going to get penalized for that. Um, so that was 50%, that penalty. Now it's reduced down to 25%. Um, and if you correct the uh, missed RMD and it a timely manner. So that's open to interpretation, I suppose. Uh, the penalty is further reduced to 10%. Um, what we have done um, in the past, so somebody has has come to us and um, maybe them or maybe their advisor accidentally uh, forgot to process the RMD. Uh, there's also a way to request that the penalty be waived entirely uh, if you take some certain steps. So that's also a, a, a potential and a possibility as well. So um, keep that in mind. If you or a family member or a friend have missed RMDs, um, correct those. You, you can send in a certain letter, um, work with a tax professional uh, as well. Um, we can guide, guide people through that um, so that hopefully there's no penalty at all. Um, or with this new, with this new law, a, a much uh, reduced penalty, if any. Abby, next on the list and something you mentioned was a pretty exciting change specifically for business owners, more Roth options in a wider variety of savings plans, including SEP and simple IRAs. Yes. So Roth options and SEP and simple IRAs now. I am very excited about this. I, I thought it was um, kind of silly that they didn't allow this. I didn't really understand the reasoning for that. Um, I think it was maybe just left out. I, I don't really know. So when I saw this, I was very excited. I love working with business owners, um, small businesses, family owned and operated businesses. Those are my passion. Um, we're a, a small family owned business. Um, and I just, I love working with business owners and it is more difficult, I believe for business owners, for self-employed individuals to, to save for retirement because they don't have that unless they set it up for themselves. They don't have that, you know, automatic 401k plan that really is just a plug and play type thing that somebody does it for them. They're, and they're responsible for setting up the plan. If they have employees for, you know, making sure that they're doing everything right. Um, and it just can get complicated. And, you know, as both of us know with business owners, sometimes we put ourselves at the bottom of the list because we're making sure our clients are taken care of. We're making sure our customers are taken care of and the business is taken care of. And so I really like the steps that are being taken um, to increase options for 
business owners and, and, and self-employed individuals. So that's going to be a Roth option for SEP, a Roth option for Simple. Um, so those are types of plans um, specifically for self, self-employed self individuals. Um, and then also the contribution uh, limits are going way up, um, which is great because basically what, what the government is saying is we're going to try and make it easier for people to save more money. Um, and what that highlights to me is that we as a country are not saving enough for retirement. Um, and so Congress sees that and they're trying to, to take steps in the right direction. Uh, and so I see that as a huge, a huge positive. And that increased contribution availability, that's true across many different types of retirement plans, including 401ks, IRAs, Roth IRAs, these SEPs and SIMPLEs that we're talking about, as well as the catch-up contributions. The, the, those in the home stretch get to save even more if they want yes. and can. Yes, exactly. So with the catch-up contributions, um, contribution levels and, or, and limits across the board are increasing. So before this Secure Act 2.0 even came about, the the uh, contribution limits for IRAs, Roth IRAs, 401ks, they were were increasing by quite a bit because of inflation this past year. So they were already going to, to be increased quite a bit. And now with this on top of that, there are even more provisions to increase that. Um, so that means increasing savings for retirement, which is obviously huge. Um, additional tax planning. So there, you know, how can we use these additional contribution limits to to do some um, tax forward planning in some way? Um, and then also, if you are on the cusp of retirement, so 60, 61, 62, 63, um, a lot of times what we see with those individuals is some expenses are dropping off. So maybe your house is paid for, maybe your car is paid for, maybe your kids are finally out of college and you were footing the bill for that. So things like that. Um, and so you have a little bit of extra cash flow. And now with these provisions, you can direct that into a retirement plan um, and really start to pump up your, your retirement savings um, in a smart way so that you can set yourself up for, for success uh, in, the next, in the next couple of years when you do want to retire. Well, speaking of those kids and their retirement plans, a lot of parents and grandparents really want to do the best thing that they can for the kids in their lives, the the important ones uh, that, that we love so much. And a lot of educational planning and expenses for education has been done through 529 plans. Now, Abby, with the Secure Act 2.0, you said that there is a provision that you are very excited about that makes those 529 plans maybe that much more appealing. Yeah, this is the coolest one. Well, one of the coolest ones. Um, I, I love this stuff. So I'm kind of like geeking out over, over all of this. Um, you and I both, I think, Peter, we're in that same boat. Um, so the 529 plan, uh, the, the provision with that is that now, so with the, the, the problem with 529 plans for a long time, for forever now, is that the tax benefit was only if you used it for certain expenses. So higher education and um, you know expenses in, involving that. If it, there was something left over, then there were taxes and penalties when you pulled it out, or you just had to leave it in there. Um, you know, you couldn't use it for your own higher education. It was just very, very limited, and it still is to a certain extent. But what they're going to allow is up to thirty-five thousand dollars that's left in a five twenty-nine can be rolled over to a Roth IRA of the, whoever the kid is of, of the 529. So now you can roll that over to a Roth IRA. If you already have a Roth IRA and, and that child's name, you can roll it over into that. It keeps that tax benefit and it also sets them up for a tax-free retirement account. You know, if you use it properly, of course, you have to avoid taxes and penalties by following the rules. But assuming you do that, Put that in there and wait 40 years or however long, you know, they're going to be in the workforce and they're in a really, really good position. Um, and talk about a great legacy to leave behind um, to a kid, to a grandchild, 
that's, that's huge. And they can use it for whatever they want to, because with a Roth IRA, there's no limitations there. As long as you, you know, follow the rules, which they're, they're pretty simple. Um, you can pull that out tax-free and, and do whatever you want to with it and use it for retirement income. Um, so it's, it's awesome. I'm very excited about that. Well, speaking of rules and limits and limitations, there are limits to what we can do in utilizing some of these retirement savings opportunities. But I guess our final thought here, a little bit of a double-edged sword, due to the inflation that we've seen over the past couple of years, the SECURE Act 2.0 also linked many of these savings opportunities, limits and limitations to inflation moving forward. So if we if we do continue to see inflation, we expect that all of these limits give us that much more opportunity to continue making the progress that we need to. Yeah, so it's a it's a difficult time for and it has been um, for a lot of Americans um, with inflation and market volatility and you know, people are going through a lot right now. Um, I see it in, you know, my personal and my professional life. I feel like people are getting hit from, from all sides. Um, and so it, it can be difficult to see you know, the silver lining. And um, a lot of people, I think that are, are on the cusp of retirement or just entered into retirement. They're like, man, what, what terrible timing, you know, we had, we had a decade plus of, fantastic market and you know everything seemed like nothing was was ever going to go wrong almost and then here we are and you know I'm supposed to retire this year or next year and and all of this stuff is going on um but there still are opportunities there still are silver linings um like this like like this law that there's a lot of different opportunities that this has created um as well as the original secure act um so we're we're more passionate than ever about helping people close to retirement or, you know, even five, 10 years away from retirement, making sure that they're taking advantage of the opportunities that are out there. Uh, they're saving enough. Um, sometimes it's hard to know, you know, how much, how much do I need to put away for retirement? Do I have enough? Um, that's one of the questions that we answer most often. Um, am I, is it in the right stuff? You know, is my investment mix right? There's just so much that goes into it. Um, and that's what we do. That's what we're here for to take this off of people's plates um, so that they can concentrate on the more important stuff, um, family and friends and um, all, all of those sort of things. Um, so this is just kind of the tip of the iceberg as far as the SECURE Act 2.0, uh, but this is what we're doing behind the scenes, making sure that we comb through all of these rules and uh, help our clients take advantage of the opportunities that it pre presents. Yeah, all of that. And then from time to time, Congress changes the rules on us. So we've got to stay up to date with that. Or you can allow the team from Reed Financial Group to help you with that. And there are many more provisions with the SECURE Act 2.0. This is only highlighting some of the, the more exciting ones that really affect probably a lot of people, but it's more than 4,000 pages. So Abby's still coming through it. We'll probably do some follow-ups uh, to this and 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 talk more about it. But Julie M. from Suwanee, uh, thank you for your question. What does the passage of the Secure Act 2.0 mean for my retirement? Well, could mean a lot. And if you would like to submit your question for Abby Reed that you would like addressed either in person or here on a future program, just go to goaskabby.com, goaskabby.com. You can submit your question there. Uh, also some great resources, past editions of the program, some things that you can download uh, to, to help you in your planning, and you can request that complimentary planning, review, and strategy session. Just give the Reed Financial Group, the retirement family, a call if you would like to be in touch personally, 678-442-0255, 678-442-0255, or again, go ask Abby dot com and Abby Secure Act 2.0. Uh, great discussion about it. We are excited about this. It does mean change. And anytime there's change, it, it probably is appropriate to review our plans uh, in detail, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. It's a good a good reminder, a good trigger to take a look at at what you're doing and see what else you can do to to put your future self in a better position. And that's what that's what we help with.
Well, that is what they are there for, the retirement family from Reed Financial Group. Abby Reed here with us as the resource on Go Ask Abby. You can visit and ask your questions at goaskabby.com or give them a call again, 678-442-0255. Once again, thank you, Abby, for all your time and, and information and education here on the program. My pleasure, Peter. Thanks again. Here to answer your financial questions, visit the website, goaskabby.com, for show resources and to submit your questions and get answers, or to schedule your complimentary financial investment and retirement planning strategy session. You can also reach out to Abby directly at 678-442-0255. That's 678-442-0255. Or at goaskabby.com. Investment advisory services offered through Brookstone Capital Management, LLC, BCM, a registered investment advisor. BCM and Refinancial Group are independent of each other. Insurance products and services are not offered through BCM, but are offered and sold through individually licensed and appointed agents. Third-party ratings and recognitions are no guarantee of future investment success and do not ensure that a client or prospective client will experience a higher level of performance or results. These ratings should not be construed as an endorsement of the advisor by any client, nor are they representative of any one client's evaluation.